guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video. Today, the day that I am uploading this onto my channel, actually marks a whole year of me owning my dream pet. So a whole year ago today, on the 19th of January, I picked up Orbit from a selling site. Happy Gotcha Day! Do you know what a Gotcha Day is? Nope. to the video where I introduced you guys to Orbit last year, you might remember that she was living in a tub type setup with her previous owner and tub setups can work for some reptiles but it wasn't necessarily working for her and I think she has come a really long way since then. She was also on some sort of wood shaving bedding, I'm not entirely sure what it was but it was not suitable for a leopard gecko and I could not switch that out sooner so I was really glad to switch her from the wood shaving she had in her enclosure. The previous owner also did not have any sort of feeding schedule with her, he would just kind of dump most of the packet of crickets into her enclosure and just let her fend for herself and catch them, which you do not want to do, I do not recommend doing that. So I did have to get her into some sort of feeding schedule and that did take a couple of months to get her used to that, instead of just having crickets running around her enclosure all the time. She has decided that she doesn't want to sit on my hand flat, she wants to sit on it this way around, so we're just going to let her do that. So yeah, her enclosure before was kind of dismal. It was an okay size, but it just wasn't set up properly for a leopard gecko. She did only have two hides, which was a humid hide and then a weird wooden hide kind of thing that's more towards small animals. And she couldn't even get on top of the hides and sit on them. So she wasn't having the best time ever in her old enclosure. And I quickly switched her over to one that was a bit more suitable. Luckily when I got her she was okay with being handled, sometimes she does have her moments even now where she doesn't want to be, like right now, which is fine, she does have a mind of her own, but luckily when I got her she wasn't too skittish and I could pretty much handle her straight away, which is good because most leopard geckos I wasn't even sure if the guy had handled her much, but she was pretty friendly as soon as I got her. So I'm not entirely sure how old she is, when I did get her the guy said she was about a year old, and she was pretty much fully grown then, so I'm guessing she is about two years old now, which is good, it means we do have hopefully many more years ahead of us. I'm not entirely sure where he got her from, I have an inkling that he did get her from pets at home, so hopefully she doesn't have any genetic issues underlying with her from being from pets at home, and hopefully she does continue to be healthy because so far I've not had any health issues with her. So I have seen so many positive changes in her since having her that I wanted to talk about in this video because it's nice to see the difference from when I first got her to how she is now. So when I first got her she did spend a lot of her time hiding which was fair enough. I think living in a tub type setup didn't really help towards that because she would have been in I think like a rack type system where she didn't see much daylight and she didn't see many things in the room around her because she couldn't really look out of that tub. So I don't think she knew that she could see things out of the exoterra. She did just stay hiding in her hides for a few weeks, up to a month before she realized that she could actually see things out of the front of the enclosure and then her personality completely changed. One of her favorite things to do and also one of my favorite things to watch her do is she will love to sit at the front of her enclosure and when the rats are free roaming in the room, sometimes they will run in front of her enclosure at the bottom and she just loves to sit there and follow them with her eyes Sometimes she will even stalk them and walk around her enclosure and stalk them. So I think that's probably kind of enriching for her. And it's definitely enriching for me to see her interacting with her surroundings and her environment more and knowing that she can do that now. She also loves to utilize all of her space in her enclosure. She's often up on the background, on the ledges, and sometimes I'll come in here expecting her to be on the bottom. And I'll look in and I'll have a moment of panic thinking that she's escaped or she's not in there because she's not in any of her hides or on the floor. And then I look up and she's just on the ledge staring down at me, which is really cute. So it's nice to see her utilizing and appreciating all of that extra space. I wasn't too sure when I did the background whether she'd even care or whether she'd even use it, but she definitely does, which is a good thing. And it's nice to see her utilizing that space because I don't think in her tub setup before she could even get on top of the hides if she did it was a really tight squeeze, so it's nice that she can climb things and go up things if she wants to. She's also a lot more friendly when it comes to her enclosure. She will now spot me if I come into the room 
and if I open up the doors sometimes she will come up to the doors and come and say hi which is really cute because that was definitely one of the things that swayed me towards wanting a leopard gecko is how curious and friendly they can be so it's really nice that she's not comfortable enough to do that with me. She's had enough of me holding her so I have popped her back. One of the biggest changes, thank god, is that she now has a much bigger appetite. If you remember back to last year and to the beginning of last year, I did have a bit of trouble getting her to eat a varied diet and sometimes getting her to eat anything at all, which was a bit stressful but we are past that now and I can say that she does have quite a varied diet, thank god. I don't think it helped that her previous owner gave her access to crickets all the time because she was so used to having crickets running around her, she didn't necessarily have the biggest prey drive and that made it tricky when presenting her with new food because she would literally just turn the other way and not look at them so it did take us a while to get her used to eating, one with a schedule and not being fed every single day, not always having access to food and also having different foods as well. So I'd say it took us a good six months to get her eating a more varied diet. She does now eat dubia roaches, mealworms and the occasional cricket. I have had to wean her off crickets a bit because personally I hate them. They get everywhere and dubias are a much better option. And we do have some dubias behind me and also some mealworms. And she eats all of them like a champ. She has such a prey drive and hunger now that as soon as you open the door she's ready to eat which is so good because I was pretty worried that she was never going to be one of those geckos that was ready to eat and it was going to be a constant struggle but she's pretty good now. It's to the point now where she does kind of get a bit sad if it's not her feeding day. I'll come in here to obviously feed the rats and feed the mice and even if I'm doing something with the leaf insects she is at the front of this enclosure staring me down begging me for food and I have to break it to her that today is not the day that you're going to get fed and that you have to wait a few more days so she does have a good appetite now. I'd say a bit too much, she does love her food a bit too much. I have had to bring it down a bit and narrow down how much I give her because she loves food a lot. One of the biggest changes and perhaps the best change that I made for her towards the end of last year is I switched her from a heat mat over to a deep heat projector. I will link the video where I discuss my reasonings for switching her onto this in the iCards and the description. It is a vlogmas video which I appreciate if you don't want to watch but I did explain my reasonings to switching pretty well. But a deep heat projector is basically another heat source you can use with them and I absolutely love it. I am not the best person to sit here and explain to you how a deep heat projector works and this video would get really long if I tried to so I will leave Leopard Gecko's YouTube videos about that in the iCards and in the description if you want to check it out. If you're curious and you potentially want to switch your Leopard Gecko over to a deep heat projector she has made a few videos on that and the benefits of using one and I can definitely confirm I also really think switching her to this deep heat projector has been really beneficial. Since using this and within like the first hour of switching it on I was already seeing positive changes in her behaviour and I don't think I'd ever go back to using a heat mat with her. Since using the deep heat projector I've seen that she has so much more energy. Before she would spend most of her day sat in her warm hide and now she doesn't need to spend barely any time there at all. She does often go around the whole enclosure and sit wherever she wants to because she doesn't have to spend as much time charging on that heat source to get the same amount of energy as she would with a heat mat so she is so much more active. Which is obviously a good thing because that means I get to see a lot more of her. She does sit out in the open more than she did when she had to sit in her warm hide and sit on that heat mat. She's often sat on top of the warm hide instead or just on the cool side chilling out which is so nice because I get to see more of her which is a plus. So yeah overall I'm just so happy with how far she's come and I hope that she's happy here. She is honestly one of my favourite animals, I am obsessed with her and I know I don't talk about her too much on the channel because I appreciate not all of you are into reptiles and I don't want to overdo it too much but I love her so much and I'm just obsessed with her. I often get asked what it's like to own a leopard gecko especially in comparison to my rodents because a lot of you are rodent owners, that's how you found my channel and you're possibly considering getting a leopard gecko in the future and I will say the initial setup and learning a different routine with a different pet can be quite daunting at first but once you've got all of that down and you know what you're doing honestly I think she's my least troublesome pet 
She causes me the least amount of stress out of everyone in this room and she is just an absolute dream to own so I definitely recommend if you have the means and the resources to do so to get a leopard gecko if you've done all your research because they are amazing pets. So as well as looking back at my past year with her, I did also want to quickly talk about my future plans for her in the next year or so. So as you know, her enclosure is currently tile on the bottom as the bottom substrate, and then the background is made from excavator clay. So the tile I'm pretty happy with. I think it is playing it a bit safe, but it does work really well in terms of cleaning. It is so easy to clean, you just wipe it down. And it does also work really well with the new deep heat projector. It does work well in terms of heating with that, so I'm not too sure whether I would switch from tile. I would consider it, but I'm pretty happy with the tile at the moment. The excavator clay background, however, I'm not entirely happy with. I like the concept and the fact you can build things for yourself, but as you can see by these clips, it has started to crumble off the top, and that did happen pretty early on in me constructing it, so that is really disappointing. Also, I do have to sweep it up quite often. I have to sweep the ledges and just sweep up on the tile because little bits here and there do come off. I don't know what it is, I don't know if it's because the tile is quite dark or the background is quite dark or just a combination of the two but when you look at the enclosure as a whole it looks quite dark and dull, I'll be the first person to admit that and I want to change that this year, I do want to do something to change it so I'm actually happy looking at it because at the moment I just think it looks kind of ugly. So I think my goal this year is going to be to change it up a bit, I think I might try to either make a background myself using expanding foam which I think is still a bit out of my league in terms of me being able to do it, or use a custom company that makes custom backgrounds. If you know of any good ones in the UK, please let me know down in the comments because so far I think I've found one that makes pretty cool backgrounds with the ledges and stuff for reptiles, but if you do know of any, please let me know because that would probably save me a lot of time and stress of trying to do it myself. Obviously when I adopted her, I had no idea how comfortable she would be in her enclosure and for the first couple of months, she was not comfortable at all, she did spend it in her warm hide, she would never use the rest of the enclosure but since adding the deep heat projector especially, she is so much more active, she uses every single inch of the enclosure so I do think it would be nice if I could give her a bit more space. I do think I might have to wait until I buy a house which should hopefully be in the next year or so, fingers crossed, to upgrade her to a bigger exoterra because I did purchase this rack before I picked her up and annoyingly you're just too small for the larger exoterras by literally a few centimetres, it's so frustrating but I could not fit one of the larger exoterras on here so I do need to wait until I've bought a house because I don't know what kind of size room the pet room is going to be in the house that we buy and I don't want to buy a rack that then doesn't fit in the house we buy so I probably need to wait until we buy a house to then buy a rack to then buy a larger exoterra if that makes sense so that's probably going to have to wait until the end of this year, possibly even next year. But yeah, just know that is something that I am thinking about and something that I'm trying to do in the next year or so. She is okay in this size enclosure, most people do use these with their leopard geckos, but I do think she would appreciate having a bit more space. So yeah, that is it for today's video. I can't believe it's been a whole year with this little one. Let me know down in the comments what other videos you'd like to see featuring Orbit because I love her so much and I know some of you guys love her too and I would love to make more videos featuring her. But until then, make sure to subscribe to see any more animal content from me and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!